One of the things that I love about video game music is that each piece has a specific emotional purpose called for by the game it's from. Whether that's making the player feel calm and relaxed, emphasizing how silly a certain character is, or injecting an introspective element into what could otherwise be just an adrenaline-fueled action game. It's a lot more fun to analyze music in the context of how well it achieves these types of specific goals, or what techniques it uses to create these desired effects. One emotional purpose that you'll see attempted in almost every game soundtrack out there is the main theme, a piece of music whose goal is to represent the game as a whole as well as to get the listener prepared and excited for the adventure at hand. This piece must be able to bring a player from a state of uninterest to a state of I can't wait to dive into this game -ness. Some games do a better job of achieving this than others, though. We all know the main Zelda theme, the various main Mario themes, the Pokemon theme, and Nintendo really has this down to a science, but it's not just them. There's also Skyrim or Halo or any number of indie games made without the financial or creative power of the Nintendo music department that achieve this musical goal without sounding generic, uninspired, or unmemorable. So what separates a great main theme from a mediocre one? Probably a lot of things, but what am I going to talk about in this video? The one that I know for sure, the idea of the iconic opening interval. Basically, in analyzing some of the most iconic and exciting main themes out there, I found a common pattern. A lot of these tunes tend to start off their melodies with a strong, isolated interval before continuing on with a melody that develops that interval into a fuller, melodic idea. It makes sense if you think about it. A novel's first sentence has got to have a hook that sucks the reader in, and in the same way a melody has to immediately grab the listener's attention, especially if it's the main theme of a game. Now, at the risk of talking about Zelda too much on this channel, let's take a look at The Legend of Zelda's main theme, because it's a perfect example of this idea. We open the melody with the sleep down of a fourth. Notice how it's separated rhythmically from the rest of the melody. This opening interval really is iconic. It's memorable, it catches our attention, and the emphasis on the fifth of the key creates some forward momentum that propels us into the rest of the piece. Furthermore, this interval becomes a motif that informs the rest of the melody. If you look, you'll see that the following three phrases offer up three different ways of connecting the same two scale degrees that the melody opened with. Having an iconic opening interval is a great way to ensure that your main theme can be transformed without losing recognizability, which can be extremely useful for making a soundtrack sound consistent. I won't go into too much depth with the Zelda example because I talked about this a bit in my Link's Awakening video, but notice how the same opening interval can take you to an entirely new melodic place while maintaining thematic continuity across the soundtrack. Another equally iconic and heroic sounding opening interval can be found in the main theme of the Halo franchise. After a soft choral introduction, the drums set up an almost tribal groove, and then the low strings come in strong with this dramatic octave leap, adding intensity with this driving triplet rhythm. The rest of this phrase is an extension to this idea, with the strings leaping a 9th, 10th, and 11th before starting the phrase over. Honestly, I can't think of a better example of a piece of music that gets you excited for the game it belongs to. Leaping up an octave or more immediately adds an insane level of drama to any melody, so making this leap the main motif of the piece is an extraordinarily bold move. Now, at the risk of talking about Mario too much on this channel, another great example comes from my personal favorite Mario game of all time, Super Mario Odyssey. The main theme kicks off its melody with a leap down of a fifth. But where this example differs from our previous two is that this isn't where the iconic opening interval ends. This leap down from the fifth to the tonic is followed by a step up to the second of the key, combining two iconic opening intervals into one motif. to your opening melodic statement, the less strong and iconic it becomes. For instance, a figure with any more than two intervals in a row will almost definitely exhibit some bigger, identifiable quality beyond these intervals. 
like belonging to a specific scale or being an arpeggio. In Super Mario RPG's track, Beware the Forest's Mushrooms, you don't hear the opening melodic statement as a series of major and minor seconds. You hear it all as a run up a minor scale, not separated at all from the rest of the melody. Now this is still a great melody, don't get me wrong, and a great tune, but it doesn't plant its flag in the ground as an iconic theme to make spirits soar and get you hyped up for the adventure at hand. Back to Odyssey's main theme, these three notes are rhythmically stressed by each being half notes played on the strongest beats of each measure. Leaving a lot of space in between each note draws our attention to the space in between each note, ensuring that these opening intervals are iconic. You can hear this opening statement return in the game's finale. When you take control of Bowser to escape the crumbling moon cave. This time though, the opening motif is transformed to fit the dire nature of the situation. This leap down of a fifth is kept the same, but the next interval is changed from a major second to a minor second to add that urgency and sense of danger. Even with this huge emotional shift, this is still obviously Odyssey's main theme, and the ease with which you can recognize this motif speaks to the flexibility you get when using these iconic opening intervals. Just going by the examples so far, you might think that a game's main theme has to use big open fourths, fifths, and octaves and only stick to the root, second, and fifth of the key. And that's true, that's all that they're allowed to do. Thanks so much for watching this vid- HOLD ON! That's not right, these aspects might be good for a more typical, big, clean adventure sound, but a main theme can use any interval in this way and still be iconic. Skyrim's main theme is a great example of basing a melody off of a less typically heroic interval to great effect. The opening melodic statement is the simple move of a minor second down returning a minor second up to the original note. The melody bases its consequent phrase off of the same idea using a major second instead, shifting the whole phrase down in order to finish off the melody on the key's tonic. The entire melody is imbued with the feeling of the diatonic second interval, which I love because that's so rare to see in video game music, especially in themes that are supposed to be big and memorable, but it totally works. I think that the interval of a second gives this piece a slightly grittier quality than a fifth or a fourth would have, which fits with the sort of dark fantasy vibe that the game creates. You can hear the same intervallic motif used as the basis for Guile's theme from Street Fighter 2. It's a completely different musical setting, genre, and tone, but it still carries that same grittiness that I think is brought on by the use of the second as an iconic opening interval. You can see composers get different results with more warm and pleasant intervals like the major sixth, too. Super Mario Sunshine's Delfino Plaza themes melody is based entirely off of this sunny interval, and you can see how this affects the tone of the piece. It's certainly less epic and adventurous than Odyssey's main theme, but it's just as inviting, and I'd say it perfectly captures the tone of the game as a whole. Using an iconic opening interval is just one way to make a melody memorable, but it's a reliable technique that I think any aspiring composer should keep in their back pocket for when they need to write a melody that really jumps out and grabs the listener. Whether it's a straightforward, solid melodic statement that implants the interval in the listener's mind, or rhythmically charged to create a ton of musical momentum, the iconic opening interval technique can be extremely useful and I hope that you find it to be such. Or at least I hope it was interesting to hear me talk about. You can follow me on Twitter at 8 Music Theory, and if you want to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon page here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all around.